Welcome to the Citadel Gray Line radio show. My name is Kyle Weaver. I'm here with Jeff Hartzell. I'm also here with John Rawl, who's joining us for our 250th show. John, it's uh, been a great run, and uh, we're excited that we can be a part of your 250th show. Jeff's been a part of all 250 of those, so uh, pretty pretty crazy day for both of you guys and a uh, successful relationship. Uh, so this is my first year, So, uh, but we're excited to, to be back talking more Citadel football uh, after uh, the Citadel took care of business against VMI, a 21-3 win, a very solid win. We retained the Silver Shaco. And we're very excited to have that around for another year. Yeah, and I think it really sets the Citadel up for an exciting finish to the season. Uh, Western Carolina and then uh, Furman the next two weeks will really determine, I think, how we remember Coach Brent Thompson's second season at the Citadel. Of course, the first couldn't have been much better with a 10 wins and a Southern Conference uh, championship. Now, how will he back that up in his second year? Yeah, so, uh, you know, very exciting. We got a lot of really exciting games, you know, so we're going to end at Clemson. That's also going to be a good thing, uh, but we're excited. We got some, we're going to talk some pseudo football. We're going to talk about last week's, we're going to do a little game recap. We're going to talk about this week's matchup, and then we're going to um, kind of celebrate the show and it's 250th uh, episode, and we're going to let John Rawl take over for a little bit and kind of share some memories he has. So uh, we'll be right back with you guys. Appreciate you guys joining us on Facebook Live. We have some viewers on here right now, so we appreciate that as well. Thank you. Welcome back to the Citadel Gray Line. My name is Kyle Weaver. I'm here with Jeff Hartzell. Uh, Jeff writes all the articles on Citadel football and Citadel sports for the Post and Courier. And you guys actually just uh, opened a page for Citadel sports. Is that correct? That's right. Uh, for a long time, uh, the College of Charleston, the Citadel, and Charleston Southern have been grouped together on the postandcourier.com website. But now the Citadel has its own page along with Clemson, Carolina. You'll find a Citadel page. Uh, if you go to postingcourier.com slash sports slash Citadel, bookmark that and you'll see all the Citadel articles right there uh, at postingcourier.com. So trying to step things up a little bit. Right. And, uh, you know, it's a competitive media environment out there and you're trying to get as many new readers and uh, retain as many of our loyal readers as we can. Right. So doing everything we can to uh, cover all our teams in the Palmetto State. Well, that's awesome. Well, you know, that's big news for Citadel fans. You know, it makes makes it easy for them to stay up to date um, with Citadel sports. But and let me just jump in here. Jeff, by far, is the <laughs> number one beat writer for Citadel sports. There's nobody it's even, does. It's not even close. No. <laughs> he, at Jeff underscore from the PC, by the way, is a Twitter account. There you go. Thank you. Yeah. Well, let's talk about this. Uh, this game that just happened, homecoming, uh, VMI, we won 21-3. to mm -hmm. Overall, it was a good showing for us. You know, defense play outstanding. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously, when you let three points up, you're very happy with that performance. Offense, put 21 points up. You know, we wish they would have put up more, but 21 points, you know, for this season has been pretty good. Well, they've been averaging about 14 <laughs> in yeah. conference games, so yeah. they got one extra touchdown. But the defense has been really good all year, with the exception of five or six minutes against Sanford, really, right. is what it comes down to. The defense has kept them in every game and uh, couldn't ask much more from those guys, especially given some of the losses they had, D. Delaney and others that should have been there that aren't or could have been there that aren't. Offense is another story. I know they were frustrated even after beating VMI that they left a lot of points out on the field. A couple of touchdown passes could have been caught. You know, one was a drop. One was a should have had, I think, then missed four field goals. Just a nightmarish day for the Citadel's kicker. So uh, I figure they should have scored about 34 points. Right. Uh, so uh, and that's been a problem all year, really. Red zone uh, stall outs. Coach Thompson calls them uh, penalties, a drop snap, a drop pass, a missed field goal. Uh, Jacob Godick is only four of 12 now on the season. That's not en that's not good enough uh, for a Division One kicker, and he knows that, and he's working to get better. So, uh, but as you say, it's two wins in a row, and it sets them up at five and three now for uh, some goals out there the next two weeks that they could hit. Right. Definitely. Well, you know, one thing that you said that just stuck out to me as a player is, you know, you talk about red zone. You know, the second time we're stalling out in the red zone. Well, you know, red zone 
defense is totally different than the rest of the field's defense. So these young guys have an idea of what they're going to get outside the red zone. Then they get into the red zone. They don't have as much space. They're going to get more crazy stuff. They're going to get an even more loaded box because they just, they don't need to defend the pass as much. That's right. And it's just going to get that much harder. And the mm -hmm. teams are going to get more desperate. They're going to throw more blitzes at you. They're going to throw all these guys. So, you know, I know we keep talking about this week in and week out, but this young offensive line is mm -hmm. seeing so many new things in the red zone. You know, just it's it's every time there's something different, there's a new blitz, there's a new front, there's new movement, all these things. And the red zone just exaggerates those. Mm -hmm. So, um you know, that's one of the things that with the young offensive linemen will just continue to get better and better at that, you know, as, and I promise you well, Coach is putting emphasis on that. Along those lines, the encouraging thing was the fullbacks finally had a breakout game, you know. Right. After watching Tyler Renew the last few years, uh, Siddle fans had gotten accustomed to big games from that B-back. Uh, we finally got that uh, against VMI. Brandon Rainey had 125 yards. and First 100-yard rusher. First 100-yard rusher in a conference game this year, which is hard to believe. And then uh, he looked at his best late in the game, really reminded people of Tyler Renew battering through the line and breaking tackles. And then Lorenzo Ward popped a long touchdown run late in the game, uh, reminded of, of Tyler Renew and other Darian Robinson, other fullbacks right. in the Citadel's past. So that was good to see. Uh, there must be some room opening up up the middle. And then we had a big um, big run from an A-back, uh, right. Grant Drayford, correct? He went for he... 70 yards on the – Citadel's third play of the game, and yeah. then only got two more carries the rest of the game. So that was kind of odd, I thought. Right. Well, but, you know, uh, there's signs there. Uh, Brent Thompson talked about it Tuesday. The Citadel has not put together a complete game in a conference game this season. You know, have to go back probably to the Presbyterian game to find a, a right. complete effort by offense and defense. And so they're still looking for that. So the encouraging thing is that's still out there for them. They can still get there. And uh, uh, they'll need it uh, the next two weeks. Definitely. I mean, both of these teams, as we'll talk about in the next year, we're going to talk about Western, the matchup with Western Carolina coming up this week. But, you know, both of these teams have had success. Walford, probably the hottest team in the SOCON. And then you have, you know, Western Carolina, who, you know, can put up points with anybody. Um, and I was talking to the coaches at State Night on Monday. He said they have a whole new defense. So everything I know about Western is kind of out the door. Um, you know, I was feeling comfortable about Western because, you know, from, from my playing days, I like going against Western. They were just too big, which is great for us because we can just, you know, speed around them. And um, so, you know, these guys, uh, we'll, we'll see how the new defense matches up. And then Furman's going to have a new new defense with the CSU coaches. So we'll get into that a little later. But um, both games are going to be big games. And, you know, like we talked about earlier, like it could really set off a end a successful second year for Coach Thompson as well as, you know, really keep that momentum that our program has built over the last few years right. and keep it going. I mean, no matter what, you know, it's going to be uh, the momentum will be there. But it's it's a lot different when you win the last few games and, yep. and get that momentum going as well as playoff hopes. Uh, you know, it's a long shot, but it's, long it's shot. still there. The Citadel's never uh, made the playoffs three years in a row. So it is a long shot, but the good news is Western Carolina and Furman are a above the Citadel in the pecking order. Right. So uh, knock off those two and you move yourself up and knock them down as well. So I think three teams from the league are going to make it this year. It's going to be Wofford and two others. Who are those two others going to be? The Citadel has a chance to put their name in that hat uh, the next two weeks. Right. John, anything? Just excited. Uh, a good winning streak that the dogs are on, and maybe the shadow of Tyler Renew looming over the field Saturday because right. he was in the in the house. Right. Maybe that inspired the Rainies and Wards of the world. Speaking of that, we had a great show out. Uh, tons of people, past players, were there. I know you made it down for the game, uh, so you were you were there as well as you know. I ran into, you know, guys like Aaron Miller, some running backs, you know, Terrence Martin. Like I ran into probably 15 old teammates. So it's great it, to plus, see that the old guys like enjoy coming back and being around the program. Yeah, yeah some had a little too much fun. Just uh, kidding. Now, I like the visor. Uh, that yeah. was really neat. You yeah. had like the old school golf yeah. visor on. And the 1992 guys were there from uh, yeah. as honorary yeah. captains. Yeah. Before the game. So, you know, so. look, they're you know. We're, we're proud to be from that program, you know, and I think, uh, you know, winning has something to do with that as, you know, we're very prideful of, you know, what we kind of did in our time. But, you know, at the same time, like, you know, even those teams that didn't have success, they, you know, they're still there. They're still back. They're still enjoying it as well. So well, I think about a guy like Aaron Miller 
and all the tough games he played and how hard he and his teammates tried and never quite enjoyed the fruits of success like right. your, you and your teammates did. Uh, you know, really says a lot for for those guys, and they kind of laid the foundation. Uh, you know, they made that move to the triple option under Kevin Higgins, that you guys uh, kind of benefited from. Took to another level, right? Uh, under Mike Houston and now Brent Thompson. Definitely, and you know, I think those guys, like you said, know it. We appreciate it. Mm -hmm. You know, that was something that every day we were talking about from Coach D preaching it to us to Coach Houston. To, you know, everybody is like. You know, hey, even if you guys aren't here for the success, you guys are going to feel a part of it when we do have it because, you know, you guys are going to know that you guys put in the work to, to change it. So, you know, as cool as like when I was – so when my junior year, when I was starting to play, you know, there was nobody for me to look up to as far as experience-wise with co the coaches we had, mm -hmm. you know, and saying, hey, what am I supposed to do here? What am I supposed to do here? You know, but by the time I was a fifth year, it was me, Isaiah Pinch, and Nick Jeffries, guys, Ryan Bednar, guys who have been in the system for so long. Mm -hmm. So those little things where, you know, you know, just, hey, do this instead of this. Or I like to think of it this way instead of this way. You know, just to click with some guys. You know, we don't all think the same. So it was pretty cool, you know, to be a part of from our first year. We were just listening to coaches. The, my fifth year, we could get to where, hey, I got some experience. Mm -hmm. I played this team. I played this player. Mm -hmm. You know, all that. So it was a pretty cool transition. You know, guys like Aaron Miller, uh, those guys definitely um, deserve a lot of respect. So. Yep. But we'll be right back. We're going to talk about this week's matchup against Western Carolina, and then we're going to talk about our 250th show with uh, John Raw here. So uh, we'll be right back, and thank you for joining us. Welcome back to the Citadel Gray Line. My name is Kyle Weaver. I am a past Citadel football player. I played five seasons with the Dogs from Coach Higgins Ayers to Coach Houston and to Coach Thompson. So I uh, was part of the two SOCON teams. We're very, very blessed there. I'm here with Jeff Hartzell from the Post and Curry and John Rawl, who is our uh, – our big man when it comes to this show. So, yeah. uh, you know, we're excited to have you on the show. Yeah, something like that. But uh, you, me, me you were number 57 on the field, but number one in our hearts. Oh. Right. Let me give a shout-out to my old football team. I played at Kubasaki High School on Okinawa, Japan oh. when I was a senior, the Dragons. So shout-out to Kubasaki. Are you wow. keeping up with them? No. <laughs> I thought you were about to tell me they'd won the world championship no, or something. No, no, I don't know how they're doing now. <laughs> Okay. You know, Cam Scott's over there, ex Citadel football player. Shout out to him. Mm -hmm. uh, he's over in Japan serving our country, so very thankful for that. Um, you know, we kind of off a, off subject here, but uh, both SOCON teams came together and we sponsored a state night at the Citadel this Monday. Um, it was a great time, so I was one of the representatives because I live in Charleston, so I was able to make it. It was me and Greg Pappas who showed up, but, um, you know, we had multiple guys donate money um, for this and give back, and, you know, it was great. Cam Scott was one of those guys who he's in Japan, made sure that he donated, made sure that he uh, let me know what he wanted me to say. So, That's um, awesome. You know, it's pretty cool to, you know, again, we're excited to give back. So it's pretty cool that we can get guys who are young in their career and, you know, trying to get established and do this and that, you know, that they can find find the means. So it's pretty yeah. cool. But, um, well, let's talk about this week's matchup against Western Carolina. Uh, Jeff, Western Carolina has a great offense. Mm -hmm. The defense is, you know, not the best, but it's it's decent. So let's, how do we match up this week against Western Carolina? Well, it's, it's going to be a great matchup. Uh, Western Carolina uh, played Furman last week in the in a rainstorm up in Cullowee and lost 28-7, to I think it was. And uh, the bad news, uh, the worst news for Western is their quarterback, Tyree Adams, right. got hurt during that game. Did not return. Half, did not return. Uh, so um, the coach was quoted after the game as saying, is not an ACL or MCL. But just the fact that he felt compelled to say that makes me think it was pretty serious. Right. Not well, as serious as an ACL, but pretty serious. So it'll be interesting to see if he's able to play at all 
on Saturday, or if he is, if he's 100%. Right. And he's a big part of their offense, number two in the SoCon in, in total offense behind only Devlin Hodges from Sanford. He's a, ranked fourth in the league in rushing and fourth in passing. So he's a, a dual threat, a right. true dual threat quarterback, and he kind of makes their system go. They also have a great running back in Detrez Newsom, who had missed a few games, came back against Furman and ran for more than 100 yards. So uh, a lot depends on whether Tyree Adams is going to be able to play or not. Their backup is a redshirt freshman who played decently against Furman, but obviously is not uh, Tyree Adams. You know, another thing about those injuries is, you know, it doesn't take much to lose that little tiny edge that players like that have. You know, sometimes those players that are – great dual threats it's only because they have a, a extra inch on somebody in the speed category they, they can get to the edge and turn that corner you know so even I if it's just a minor injury you I know we saw that with clemson and kelly bryant right at syracuse yep. bryant was not 100 percent, and it really showed in that game and uh, could be in for a, fem a similar situation on saturday but uh, western's defense as you mentioned has improved uh, a, a little bit and uh but it's mainly their offense that has been the story. Right. That always has been. Yeah. Always has been. So, you know, I, I think it's going to be an exciting matchup to see our defense, who's played extremely well against an offense that has lots of threats offensively as well as have, has, has had some success. So uh, that's going to be the matchup to watch. And then our offense against their defense, you know, uh, whoever can win that battle obviously will be huge. But, um, you know, that ma the major matchup will be our defense against their offense. And, yeah. uh, you know, it's going to be – luckily we have them at home in our last uh, home game of the season – and then we head up to the upstate two weeks in a row. So I know the players will be excited for for those two games. But, you know, this is a good matchup where our defense is going to have to match up against guys who maybe are a little bit more explosive than, mm -hmm. say, Walford might have. You know, even though Walford might be the better team together, they might not have the explosive threats that, say, Western Carolina right. has. The receivers are very – always good at skill positions up right. at Western. The receivers are very good. And they run a lot of the run pass option uh, out of the shotgun. You'll see the quarterback stick the ball into the running back's gut, and he'll read a linebacker or maybe even a cornerback. And uh, he'll pull it out, and if the cornerback's off, he'll throw it out to that receiver. Right. So it's really the option spread wide across the field. Yep. And that, that can put a lot of stress on a defense. Definitely, definitely. I mean, it's it's going to be a fun game, that's for sure. And uh, we're last year's game was real fun. Right. I oh, mean, yeah. that was a amazing beatdown in the second half up there in Colorway. Yeah. I mean, and that's one of the coolest stadiums in the SoCon right there mm -hmm. in Colorway. I love that. We we stay at this hotel. It's like this little beatdown little place. <laughs> the coaches have nice rooms over here, and then mm -hmm. the players are all here. You know, they don't have TVs like they do have TVs, but like like the old big box TVs and stuff. And it's <laughs> it's just hilarious. You know, it's not Where, like is it in Silva. Where is the hotel? You know, I couldn't tell you. I think it's you. in Waynesville. Okay. It's on you a know, golf course or something. Yeah, it? it's on a golf course. So, you know, we, we walk across. It's like funny. You know, we have all these players. We all have little porches. We all just <laughs> go out there, and we're walking the golf course in between yeah. meetings. And, uh, you know, it's always a great temperature this time of year. So, you know, always a fun, a fun trip. I always really enjoyed that. I so. remember last year that was the breakout game for Jonathan Derogi. Derogi. Derogi, yeah. sorry. Yeah, yeah, Jonathan. Yeah, he's a – you know, he's had some, some big plays in his career. For a guy who, you know, hasn't necessarily been a, a starter, you know, he made some big plays and big catches, you know, throughout his little career. I remember the game is what yeah, I remember. The touchdown. Yeah, yeah, the touchdown he scored so. against VMI. Uh, the thing at Cullowee that I always remember is uh, there's a mountain. As you look across the, the field from the press box and the sun sets right behind that mountain and it can get pretty right in your face. Right in your face. Yeah. So, but it's beautiful up there, uh, and I love the mountains. So, got some great scenery in the Southern Conference. I, I think we take for granted what we have at Johnson Haggard Stadium. If mm -hmm. you're sitting on the west side, looking across at the Ravenel Bridge, and mm -hmm. of course, we would prefer a nice new stand well, we'll get to be over there on the east mm -hmm. side. But uh, just a, a wonderful environment. Yep. Even VMI's got a pretty cool setup. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was talking to guys. I, I like the VMI trip as well. I mean, there's. They got a cool spot. You know, it's cool to be in a different campus that's like ours and kind of see that, see that I, slight difference. I don't know if they did this while you were playing, Kyle, but uh, uh, years ago up at VMI, their cadets used to hang these sheets out of the barracks that are across the street from the stadium. Uh -huh. And just they were painted with blood and death skulls and all this kind of weird 
Nah. Stuff you never. Saw nah, that. I never. I never. Did that years ago. He was and, focused uh, on the field. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, they stopped at some point. I don't, I'm not sure why. But, uh, I'm sure the administration was like, "All right, yeah. enough is enough with yeah. that." So. Yeah. Um, well, awesome. So we have uh, Joe is here. Joe Deatons is here. So, All right, uh, Joe. Appreciate that uh, for our 250th show. But we're excited. Uh, we're going to get back. We're going to let John take over a little bit. We're going to talk about the show a little, about the history of the show, the future of the show, and just, you know, have some good times. So we'll be right back. Thank you. Welcome back to the Citadel Gray Lawn. My name is Kyle Weaver. I'm here with the crew right now, Jeff Hartzell and John Rawl. Uh, we want to just say thank you to uh, Eric Hubbs for congratulating us on our 250th show. Uh, he is a loyal fan. Saw him this weekend. Uh, he loves the show. Number and, 55, getting uh, a lot of action. Had a sack in the game against yep, VMI. Yep, and we're excited. He told me that he's he's at work watching it on a little monitor down there. So you know. Don't tell Mecklenburg County, North Carolina government that. <laughs> but, uh, be our little secret. We appreciate your support. And we got Scott Rodas over here from the upstate, uh, upstate New York. New York. So uh, people all the way in New York watching Citadel Gray Line. That's pretty cool, guys. So we appreciate you tuning in today. We even Uh, have one in uh, Holland that watches us every week. So we're all over the place. Very good. Awesome. And we had uh, Joe here, and he just asked a question to us. So we'll just go ahead and get that out of the way. He asked, why do our wide receivers not wear gloves? Uh, You know, as an offensive lineman, uh, you know, that type of stuff to me is not really important. I never wore gloves. It was just too hot. But Mm -hmm. But you never dropped any passes. Right, never dropped any passes. Uh, right. So, you know, my, my thing would be uh, I think most of them do. Maybe at times they take them off because their hands get hot or mm-hmm. something like that, or maybe that they get dirty. Or, uh, I'm trying to remember in the past. I think I think they have in the past. I remember Alex Glover, I think, wearing gloves. You know, I, de- I know they definitely gloves, wear gloves. Because his name, glove, Glover. In glove. the in the, in the Locker room, it's a big deal. Of like, mm-hmm. oh, we got a pair of gloves, you know. Yeah, and they're always. Yeah, there. yeah, oh yeah. So I know they definitely the equipment staff have them. does a great job mm-hmm. of making sure they get the gloves. But um, I, you know, I think it's all per- personal preference. So, mm-hmm. uh, but that's a great question. And as offensive linemen, maybe, I don't uh, have too much information maybe on they'll that. They'll have to think twice about wearing them uh, from now on. Well, I found out from talking to Kyle and his parents that the biggest injuries that you received as an O lineman was like arms. Yeah. So. Uh, one year, I, I mean, technically there nothing happened to them, but you know, like I got stepped on. So my hand, my left hand swelled up. I think I had like, my my diagnosis would be a hairline fracture. Okay. Um, and then the next year I did the same thing to my other hand, just from you know being on the ground, having people step on your hands, as well as you know getting up and you know having your helmets bang in and get your hands stuck in between. Um, also, um, nothing you can do to protect your hands I you know guess. there's offensive line gloves and you know you talked about it but then again you know you're you tied it's it's not really worth it at the end of the day if you have two big guys coming in what's a little foam pad gonna do um you know and, and that's football as well and you know when you're falling on the ground like one of my injuries came you know after a block i, I fell on the ground my you know dislocated my finger and you know other some other things but um you know, overall, it's that's how it's going to be, and, and gloves really aren't going to fix that too much. But you know, again, if guys want gloves, they're more than free to to I, get them. But I think the gloves they have now definitely help in catching the ball. Oh yeah, no question about it. So, definitely. Um, and Kyle, that, Kyle, for old times' sake, since it's been about a year since you suited up in blue and white, if they will uh, get me a hammer over there, if you'll lay your hands out, I'll just start banging on your hands and make you feel <laughs> oh, man. back I, at home. You know, that's what people are like, do you miss football? <laughs> yeah, you miss it. I'm like, you know, I do. Like, when I'm out there tailgating, I'm like, I wish I was in that locker room right now. But, you know, after the game, you know, when they're hurting, you mm-hmm. know, and all that, and when they got to go to practice on Sunday and Tuesday, yeah. I, I don't miss that. You know, I'll work, you know, a long week and still have free time and time for myself and can do whatever I want and go when I, you know, you know, so, uh, you know, those things I don't miss about football, but I definitely miss, you know, two hours before a game, you're getting in that mindset of let's go and knowing that you put in the work and, and all that stuff. I, I enjoy that, but. Let me um, ask a bizarre question because I'm pretty good at asking bizarre questions. I've noticed this through the years and it didn't really hit me until this past weekend in the Altman Center at Johnson Hagen Stadium, when a visiting team comes, they have a locker room. I assume they have showers in their locker room? They do. Does the home team have showers? We do. Well, why do so many cadet athletes walk back to campus without taking well, a shower? Well, it's just one of those things, you know, you have maybe 
five showers at the stadium. Okay. And we got uh, 20 at, you know, the home locker room, back at the field. It's not that far of a walk. Your parents want to see you now. Yeah. Okay. Um, then you can walk over there with them. And then, you know, obviously you have to bring all your shower stuff to the, to the stadium if you want to do it. It's easier on the equipment staff just to have okay. all that stuff over there. Um, I was feeling sorry you know, for you, but y'all actually then, but make then, a choice here. Right, yeah, but, you know, I mean, during my time, nobody showered there. Really? As far as that. So, um, you know, it's one of those deals where we're at our, our on-campus locker until last second. We go to the other locker room. We spend, like, two hours there, if that. And, you know, we, we walk out right after the game. So it's one of those deals where um, all your belongings are back at the other locker room, and it's just easier just – not to carry it over because when, when we go from there to the stadium, all, all I had to bring was my phone, my headset, maybe a phone charger. Um, you know, if the I, important things. Right. If I, <laughs> if I wanted anything, you know, extra, like, you know, a snack or something before the game, I maybe brought that. But that was it, you know. And, th- and then I give it all to the equipment staff. They take it back. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a good, you know, that's just kind of how it is, I guess. Well, if you've ever been at Johnson Hagen after a game, you'll see all the football players kind of all tired, but they walk back. And, again, old people like me like, man, I don't know why they don't have a shower in the locker room, but they actually right. do. But it's easier you know, for you, know, you as a player to. Because we spend so little time there in the off season and stuff, they invest all their money into the on-campus locker room. Okay. And that, right. that locker room, you know, at our stadium is it's bare bones. It's bare bones. It's concrete floors and wooden our old lockers. So, um, you know, it's it's not it's nice now. But when I was first there, it was just metal benches and, and walls and concrete. The like it wasn't anything. It's a way to spend time with family. That's at a premium. Uh, yeah, my mom loved that. So really, um, hi mom. You know, and if I if I said no, mom, I'm getting on the bus. I gotta you know be somewhere and thirty you know. I got to go, you know, then, no, you know, she no. missed out on it. So, you know, that's definitely appreciate. You know, they like that. And, yeah. you know, it's fun. To, if you win, it's fun to walk oh, back because yeah. the alumni are cheering, on, cheering you on and this and that. If so. you lose, you're calling Uber. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you, well, you just hop on that bus and Andy's yelling at you and, uh, <laughs> you know, you have a good time. But, um, you yeah, know, so that's, that's kind of like, you know, some teams you'll go in, there'll be super nice locker rooms. Some, some you can barely move. You're so mm-hmm. tight. You know, so it's just – how it well, is. I think welcome back to the little gray line, like he just said. Uh, we're excited to be here. Um, you know, we're just going to talk and celebrate the show for 250th episode. You know, Jeff, you've been a part of that for all shows. So let's just talk about the, the beginning times, which was in 2008, mm-hmm. all the way to today. And let's just remember well, those. I think it's interesting is uh, John does these shows for a lot of schools, John, uh, throughout the South. Yes, I started, I started uh, an Ole Miss show in 2005 because I was living in Oxford, Mississippi, and we've had as many as 15 shows. Right now I'm doing about eight. Mm-hmm. Uh, some shows I haven't uh, been doing for a while. But, yeah, we do a weekly one-hour show for schools like the Gamecocks. We do a Georgia Bulldog show, Georgia Tech, Ole Miss. We do a Texas Longhorn show and a Texas Aggie, Texas A&M Aggie show. And we've done other shows throughout the years, including Clemson. And we're giving fans what they want, an hour of specific talk about the school. Usually we're teamed up with the Rivals.com or Scout.com analysts. We don't have that at the Citadel, so you're our website guru that also is a newspaper guru. But people love college football. They love mm-hmm. sports, and we give them that dose of a weekly dose of information about the it's, team. It's amazing the appetite that fans have for their favorite team. I mean, mm-hmm. the websites that have sprung up like uh, Clemson Insider and Tiger Illustrated mm-hmm. and uh, for the big schools and people pay money to read and hear about their team constantly. It's amazing the appetite aside from, you know, traditional media, yeah. which I sort of represent. So, but the Citadel Gray Line was sort of a labor of love for you. Uh, it was. I mean, like I said, I'd started an Ole Miss show in 2005 and that became very successful. We had that on about 10 radio stations our first year and made a few pesos on it. And so we expanded the next year to Georgia, Georgia Tech, and then we added South Carolina and Clemson. And I'm like, I love the Citadel. Maybe a show like this would do okay for the Citadel. And after we had you on board, and Jim Waddell was very key to the growth of the show. And he'll be coming on the show in just a minute via telephone. Uh, We can only limit him to the show for a little bit because he he will talk all day long. That's another reason we started the show. It gave Jim a, a chance to talk about the 1940s Citadel teams. Just kidding, Jim. 
But, it, it, you know, the, the Citadel show I'm very proud of. We have 250 episodes. Jeff has been a big part. If you're not here or watching us, we have a beautiful cake that we're going to dive into that celebrates our 250th episode. Uh, we've had some rough years there, Jeff, not necessarily production-wise, but what we had to talk about, the subject right, matter. Right, You know, the Citadel uh, is obviously a very challenging place in any sport for a coach to try to win, just given the nature of the school and uh, the uh, recruiting challenges that, that that presents. You have to find the right kind of kid in any sport to come to the Citadel and uh, go through the things you have to go through there uh, in order to play your sport. But uh, over the years, there's been uh, guys that have been able to get it done. You know, Kevin Higgins had his good years, and now uh, Mike Houston and Brent Thompson have given the Citadel some of their best best football seasons ever. So it's, it's been fun to see that happen, and uh, it's been fun to see uh, sort of the technology of the yeah. show progress over the years as well. Now you're on Facebook Live and uh, getting to people that way and also on your, your website. And on iTunes, are you still? Yeah, we're on iTunes. Mm -hmm. You can, if you have a smartphone, you can simply go into the podcast portion of iPhones and search for Citadel Gray Line. Actually, if you'll search for our, our parent company, CRM Sports, you'll see all of the shows that we produce, and they're all on in iTunes. And we have a YouTube channel, CRM Sports, so you can watch the visual element of the various shows that we do visually in YouTube. So check that out, all free. I'm amazed. Uh, I have kids who are in their 20s, and they listen to podcasts all the time, mm -hmm. and that's a big part of, I don't know, Kyle, if you do, of the media diet of younger people, maybe in their 20s and 30s. They're listening to podcasts on their phones about their favorite subject, music or sports or politics or TV shows or whatever it is. There's a podcast out there for almost every interest, and uh, I think it's a good way to reach uh, some younger younger people it's good podcast but we also want to keep in mind that the crm sports shows like citadel gray line we also produce these for radio stations and they have been a key part of our growth through the years our longtime affiliate 92.9 am 660 up in greenville spartanburg I want to thank them for not only carrying this show but they've been a long time home for citadel bulldog football in the upstate of south carolina and here in charleston wohm 96.3 a longtime partner of Citadel Gray Line and the other stations that we've had through the years. So it's, it's really a collaboration of a lot of aspects of the show, and we've enjoyed it. In fact, it's been such a great thing that – have you ever – you're an award-winning journalist, right? That is correct. You have had many awards? I have, yes. And you're an award-winning football player? Some would say. Okay. Well, let's <laughs> add to your collection. Joe? Joe's here, and he's got us something on behalf of Citadel Gray Line we're going to bestow <laughs> on these gentlemen. Jeff Hartzell, Look at that. A, a small token of our appreciation, and to Mr. Weaver, thank you for helping us grow on the Citadel Gray Line. The plaque says, presented to Kyle Weaver to commemorate 250 episodes of dedication and bulldog tenacity. Mama, I made it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he made it, so congratulations. And, correctly and, everything and I want to thank Joel that. Thompson, our offensive coordinator, for helping me get these made. So uh, Very nice, thank you. So uh, I wish the check, the the armored truck was supposed to be here with all the cash to give you as well, yeah. but uh, they're a little late. <laughs> Got a FedEx truck out there or a Cisco or somebody. Yeah. But anyway, great job, and we can't thank uh, all of our audience as well for helping us through these years. Uh, really been so much fun to have people come up to me and say, I love your show. In fact, that's how I met Kyle. His mother called up with me after the Gardner-Webb game and said how much she enjoyed listening to the show, and we developed a friendship and other folks who uh, make a point to listen or watch the show. And I was glad to give the reins to Kyle this year so we could do this thing on location in Mount Pleasant. He's done a great job. He, as a recent player, he has a lot of insight into what's happening right now with this team and a lot of the guys he knows that are on this team. And he can talk about showers, <laughs> hotels, and offensive line play, oh, anything man. you want. That's right. He can tell you the inside Well, scoop. you know, I know I have enjoyed it, and Jeff makes it easy. You know, he has all the knowledge. So you just got to throw something up for Jeff, and he just hits it out of the park. <laughs> you know, so. Good World Series terminology yeah. there. So, uh, you know, I've enjoyed it, and I'm – Glad to be here. So. Good. Well, we're not done. This is not our last show. This is yep. only the 250th show. we got at least 250 left. So There you go. There you go. Speaking of that, let's go to a break and come back with Jim Waddell, who was one of our original co-hosts, and we're going to join him from his broadcast center in Ballantyne, South Carolina. Sounds great. We'll be right back.
Welcome back to the Citadel Gray Lot. We're here celebrating our 250th show. We have some pretty special Jeff, uh, guests today. So I'm going to let John take over and kind of uh, introduce everybody and lead Good. this segment. Kyle, again, great job by you this year. I'm very proud of you and the Citadel School of Journalism for getting you ready for your career here in broadcasting. John Raw with Jeff Hartzell who in March of 2008 joined me and this guy that's on the phone, Jim Waddell, on the very first episode of Citadel Gray Line. And so let's go to the outskirts of Ballantyne, South Carolina, and catch up with Jim Waddell, Citadel class of 1960. Hello, Jim. Hello. <clears throat> hey, how you fellas doing? Um, John, Jeff, and Kyle, it's good to be on the show with you. Well, good to uh, see you. We'll celebrate the 250th edition. Well, thank you. We're sorry you were not here in person, but I did catch up with you en route to the show and uh, bestowed upon you the plaque that I just gave Jeff and Kyle for their efforts on Citadel Gray Line. Wow, that's great. Well, I'm sure they're as proud of theirs as I am of mine. Um, glad that Diane could be a party to it yesterday <laughs> and uh, take part in the um, the, the hugging and uh, picture taking ceremony. <laughs> no, that's, that's really a, a neat plaque, and uh, I, I really appreciate it. Well, thank you, and thank you for helping me get this thing started along with Jeff some ten years ago as we decided to do this show and then in 2008 jeff i don't even remember who the coach was i guess it was higgins but Kevin higgins. yeah but uh, maybe not the best of seasons and we we uh sucked it up as we learned as cadets and drove on and made it through the the, the lean years and then we of course have been doing it here of late jim kind of went into semi-retirement from the show a couple of years ago but we have him make a regular appearance and jim i don't want to make your head swell too much but oftentimes when i'm out in tailgating circles, they're asking me about what happened to Jim Waddell. Where's Jim Waddell? We want him on the show some. Well, you know what? Um, I think I can blame it on our mountain house in Maggie Valley, North okay. Carolina, because we had the final walkthrough on that in late December of 2011, and it was uh, probably four or five weeks prior to then that I told you I was going to be retiring as of the uh, Christmas break. Yes. So I'm, I'm going to blame it on the house, and, and Diane wants to spend more and more time up there, maybe even change our legal domicile someday. Hmm. Uh, Think about adding on to it, so I may, um, that, that offer you tentatively made to me yesterday, if it's still if it's still good, I may take you up on that and come back as a as about a third or fourth or fifth co-host and make a little <laughs> extra money to pay for it. You could be in the Reserve Army. Jim is the son of a <laughs> Citadel alumnus. Jim has been going to Citadel football games probably in the 30s. You probably went as a baby, but I, I know you definitely went to Citadel games starting in the 40s in places like Orangeburg, South Carolina, when we used to play the Gamecocks there. Did you know that, Kyle? I had no clue. Yeah, and Jim saw a few of those games. He saw the dedication at Johnson Hagen Stadium in 1947 against Clemson. Is that right? 1948. 48, sorry. You were there for yeah, that, that game? Was the, that was the official dedication of the new concrete and steel Johnson Hagen Stadium. Uh, it turned out in early December of 1948 when I was 10 years old. Um, last game of the season, but uh, because the opponent were the undefeated, highly ranked Clemson Tigers, uh, they waited to have the official dedication last game of the season when Clemson came to town. Yes. That, that was very special. I, I that was the only game I can ever remember sitting uh, into the sun. We sat on the East Stands, and uh, I guess the only time I can ever remember squinting into the sun on an afternoon game in Johnson Hayden Stadium. Wow. Of course, Jim was at the 1960 Tangerine Bowl. You've heard about a Citadel winning a bowl game. I have. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And he was there for that game after he had just graduated from Citadel. And all the years of coming to Johnson Hayden Stadium for games and the road games, too, I believe, Jim, it was October 20th of 1990. You were at a special game in Columbia. Absolutely. I believe the, um, the school, board, school board told the story of all civil grads no best. I believe it was 38-35 <laughs> over the Cox. By this team yeah, right here under Charlie stadium. Taft. Yes. So uh, <laughs> That was a great game. I, that's the closest I've ever come to passing out. I'm <laughs> excited when 
I think Kyle Weaver <laughs> almost passed Cubs out of the Navy, the, the Gamecocks, too, so y'all have something in common. Yeah. <laughs> Jim, if you will, tell us your favorite Citadel Gray Line memory through the roughly seven or eight years you have been involved with the show. Um, you know, if you ask me what my favorite edition was, I'd probably say all of them because I thoroughly enjoyed um not only the times that I participated in over 100 episodes, but uh, that's back in the day when we went up from late August through mid-May. But uh, if you pin me down, I'd probably say the one in particular which stands out, which is near and dear to my heart, uh, featuring my classmate, class of 1960, of course, and Bravo company mate, Dave Boyd of Newland, Georgia now, and I was surprised, call in guest. Uh, the one and only Jeff Foxworthy, for whom Dave worked as an illustrator for Jeff's Redneck series and more, I'm sure. And that, uh, I, were, I did, um, since we uh, casually mentioned that recently, John, I, I went on to, I clicked on your archives. Mm-hmm. That's, that's impressive, isn't it? I clicked on your archives, did a little research, and for any of our viewers or listeners who are interested in pulling up that edition, it was uh, February 9th of 2011. Okay. And people can go to the website citadel.libson.com. That's L-I-B-S-Y-N.com. And all 250 episodes are right there at the click of a button. And you can uh, search for all of them. Jeff, I know that's going to be what you're going to do when we get off the air. You're going to well, go back and listen to all 250. It's use, as a matter of fact. Uh, go back and listen to interviews with Charlie Taft. And, and it, has a search, it has a search engine there where you can search for names and classes and that's awesome. all kind of stuff. So it, it's been a very uh, useful thing. And that links into iTunes as well. So you can also find it in iTunes searching that way too. But Citadel, that's C-I-T-A-D-E-L, dot libson l-i-b-s-y-n dot com jim thank you so much i i looking forward to you being here in person when we have our 500th episode yes sir um you know come um six months from now i'll turn 80 but i'm uh my sexy baritone voice is hanging in there tough and uh i plan to be around to good lord willing well, Kyle, being the knob on the crew this year, he doesn't realize the power this show has. Several years ago, Jim was in Columbia, which is the area that he lives in, and he walked into a business, and a lady asked him, excuse me, sir, and by the way, Jim's a retired, worked at a bank forever. He's from that line of, of, of career. A lady said, excuse me, sir, do you have perhaps work on the radio? <laughs> and he didn't even... He really didn't know what she was talking about at first. And, and then he got to thinking. He said, well, actually, I'm co-host of a Citadel show. She said, that's it. This lady in Columbia listened to our show, and she wow, heard his voice. voice. So, Kyle, I'm telling you, big things are ahead. Hey, that's what I'm hoping for. Yeah, that's <laughs> what I'm hoping for. Yeah. So. One of my favorite parts of the show is just listening to Jim talk. Oh, yeah. That great uh, <laughs> southern accent. And, yes. From from He's a native of Holly Hill, so... Four That's Hole right. Swamp is the place to go to learn how to have a great voice. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Um, by the way, Kyle, um, congratulations on being such a fabulous little gray, gray line knob host. <laughs> well, thank you. You realize you're a little gray line knob host. <laughs> That's right. I yeah. mean, you really, you really are going, uh, going up in the world rapidly. <laughs> but, but anyhow, you're doing a great job. And, and then, of course, there's Jeff Mainstay Hartzell. Oh. Yes. Little old beat writer. And, and, uh, Top ranked, I, I hear. Number one, the not, uh, best in yeah. the world. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I don't know what, what would have become of the show had it not been for our mainstay, Jeff yeah. Hartzell. Yeah, we can't thank Jeff uh, enough because... There is yeah. nobody that covers a Citadel like Jeff, and Jeff has always been like a Citadel cadet right there, yeah. shined and, and prepped and ready, and, and uh, whether it was a good day or bad day, he was there, and we appreciate that. Well, thank you very much. I've enjoyed it. Okay. Well, Jim, thank you, Can sir. Can I say one more quick thing to Kyle? Yes. Uh, Kyle, you know, you're a, again, you're a fabulous um, knob host, and um, – Although John keeps reminding me that my class, the class of 1960, was the last class to have it easy at the Citadel, <laughs> uh, because you do such a fabulous job, I'm not even going to tell you as a knob host to 
rack your chin in, shoulders back and down, suck your preponderous gut up and keep your beady eyes straight your front knob. You understand me? Pop off. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jim, lay off He's the coffee. Still got it. He's still got it. All still right. Got it. Jim, thank you, sir. Thank you. All right. We appreciate it. Jim Waddell, Citadel Class of 1960, joining us from the Columbia suburb of Ballantyne. Kyle, I'll let you take it away. Well, guys, uh, you know, great show today. Appreciate you guys uh, being here with me today. Uh, great show. Um, good to talk to guys who have been a part of this show since the beginning. And uh, hopefully this show will continue to go on more and more. And hopefully we'll get to 500 here soon. <laughs> and uh, thank you for the support. And we'll see you guys next week. Thank you all very much. Go, go Bulldogs. Go Bulldogs.